Welcome to Texas, Asher. I'm glad to be here. We are here facing the TCU Horned Frogs, an FBS team we met back in 2010 who beat us 62-7. to That's the only meeting that we've had with them, but I'm sure today's going to be different. Yeah, after last week, I'm definitely uh, feeling positive about a different outcome for this game. Uh, right. We beat Sanford 52-20. to that takes the overall series between them, ties it at 12 and 12. Our star player, Jared Howell, who had a punt return touchdown and a pick six. Yeah, it was a crazy game. Yeah. So I think they're going to take that momentum and take it to this FBS team, the TCU Horn Frogs. Here we go. Well, here we are, ladies and gentlemen, in Fort Worth, Texas, at MNG Carter Stadium, capacity. 45,000 people, and it looks like they have filled every seat here as Texas Christian University is ready to take on Tennessee Tech. Here's the kickoff, and we begin. Horned Frogs are going to take a knee and bring it out to the 20. I'm excited to see how this defense is going to play. They were very, very strong last week. Uh, all sides of the ball were very strong last week. Yes. Um, Ooh, and looks... starting off strong. Look at that. On the sack, number 77, Michael Scavo. I'm ready to see Jaquan Coles. Ooh! Wow, another stop at the line. Jaquan Coles, surprisingly one of the fastest members on the Golden Eagle team. The entire team, he is the fastest. Uh, looks like they've brought him out on this third and ten, but I'm ready to see him rack up some tackles, some plays in the backfield. He really is a good player, and, you know, we'll see him in the league one day. Here's the throw, and it is intercepted! Number 26, Jamal Thompson, the cornerback out of Hendersonville, Tennessee. We're off to a great start. This is exactly what we want to see. Um, first step to making this game not turn out like the last meeting. Exactly. Look at that. Their offensive line was able to give their QB enough time, but I think he just held on to it too long. He threw it into double coverage, and now Tech has the ball on TCU's 30. And we are not even a minute into the first quarter. Look at that, Golden Eagles wings up. Crowd getting into it as they do not want to see the Golden Eagles get a touchdown on their first drive, which, you know, I'm pretty confident they can do. Hand off, ooh. Met at the line is Day Day Gist. Uh, I think Coach Alexander was playing the same game plan he had for last week. That first offensive handoff was a touchdown, 71 yards there. Right. Um, but it's not, not going to turn out the same as it did. You know what they say, if it's broke, don't fix it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Taco for loss. It's going to bring up third and 13. Hopefully Tech can make something happen here. Yes, not a familiar sight for Tech as they were just able to move the ball in all aspects last game. But maybe they've got something dialed up. Maybe a little play action. Bailey Fisher drops back. Rolling out, he's going to throw. Incomplete. <sighs> that is dropped, but at least they will be in field goal range. It's okay. Tavin Kilpatrick, the intended receiver. Bailey Fisher smacking him on the head for not catching that ball. <laughs> but 4th and 13, ball on the 33. Golden Eagles, you know, they are going to punt. Yeah, I guess that would make sense. That's like a 50-yard field goal. Yeah. Right. Here's the know, as good as last week's game was, it kind of gives uh, almost a sense of false hope for the rest of the season because you're going to expect the offense, the defense, and special teams to all play on such a high level that brought that 52-20 to victory last week. And um, I'm not sure if they're going to be able to live up to it, but hopefully they can. Exactly. And, you know, 522 left in the first. TCU's right back where they started. 
Let's see what the Golden Eagles can cook up. It looks like some of their linebackers, uh, they're going to drop back. They look like they were going to blitz. Uh, diving for a couple more yards. That'll be a pickup of about seven. Yep. Second and three, ball on the 27. Horn Frogs, you know, they're a good team, respectable. Um, they definitely don't want to lose this game. You don't want to be the one FBS team to lose against an FCS team. And Taco for loss right down, right around the line of scrimmage there. It's going to bring up third and two. Michael Dixon on the tackle. And third and two, Golden Eagles looking for a stop. Quarterback under center. Two backs behind him. Hand off to the right of yeah, the defense. Looks like he made it. Seth Carlisle didn't know what was coming to him. He got tripped up, but helped aid in the tackle. And the Horn Frogs are moving. They've now got the ball on the 33. Jaquan Coles is in. Looks like it's going to be another handoff. Ooh. Ooh, tripped up. Seth Carlisle? Yeah. Now second and ten. It's going to be another handoff. The running back who's... Able to get a first down. Four attempts, 20 yards. Corso for president. I'm not even sure who that is, Tech Man. Uh, Lee Corso is a football announcer. Most famous for college. All right, it's going to bring up first and 10. Ball on the 44. Quarterback under center. Another handoff, and he's free. He's got a running and lane. He's able to break a tackle, but eventually brought down by Jaquan Coles, who was able to run from the defensive line all the way back to the safety and make the tackle. You want to see speed? I'll show you speed. Okay. That was right there. Oh, okay. And that brings another first down for the Horn Frogs. <sighs> These toads are moving. Golden Eagles just need to stop. Wait. Yeah. Right, we're currently seven plays on this drive. They are eating up a lot of clock on this drive. Golden Eagles. Another handoff. He's Stiff able to arms. break a tackle. Able to push through to the six yard line, maybe the seven. And this running game is working for the Horned Frogs. Tech. I'm not mistaken, there hasn't been a passing attempt on this drive. That's right, and that's what you need to do. If you are able to keep running the ball towards the defense, you need to stay with that game plan. You know. Whoa! That poor, <laughs> that poor line judge just, just, just ran in. Oh my goodness, that poor guy. We're going to need a replacement for him. <laughs> wow. Shows you how good Tex defense is. Another handoff. And that is going to be a touchdown for the Horned Frogs. Uh, with 2.44 left in the first quarter. Horn Frogs go up six, pending the extra point. Yeah, it's just that running game. Blocking is too good, and Tex backs can't get. Tex backs can't get to the stop. So now here comes the extra point attempt, and Tech will get the ball. And the kick is good. Ah, what is that? They turned How to Train Your Dragon into a real thing. Yeah, wow. It's a weird Pokemon. You gotta catch them all, right? Gotta catch them all.
TCU out to kick. Taking his time. And here's the kickoff. Fielded in the end zone. He's just going to take a knee. That is Quentin Cross, the wide receiver out of Clarksville, Tennessee. So now here come the Golden Eagles on their own 20. Oh. They had that interception, but this, this is their first real drive, you know. They weren't supposed to have the ball that soon. Bailey Fisher with the play action. He's going to throw it away. Yeah. Looks like Demetrius Fleming was the intended receiver on that. Yeah. So now that brings up second and ten. Ball on the 20. Billy Fisher running back to his left. Hands it off. Tackled in the backfield. That's Day Day Gist. And Golden Eagles just in another third and 13 position. They can't get anything going right now. Yeah, I know it's only two minutes left here in this first quarter, but if they're wanting to make a difference in this game, they're gonna have to. Uh, they're gonna have to figure something out. Right. Oh, and, and Bailey Fisher's sacked. going to be sacked at the ten yard line. Uh, so that brings up fourth and nineteen, and Tech is gonna have to punt this one away after three and out. Here comes Blake Alberts to punt in their own end zone. Hopefully he can put some power behind this and really flip the field. Here's the punt. Got some good leg on it. All the way back to the 40. He's going to run it back. He's got a running lane. And, oh my goodness. It is returned for a touchdown. Wow. This is definitely not what we were expecting coming into this game after the very big win off of last week. Right. Um, everything that has happened, everything that happened to Samford is now happening to us with the punt return touchdown and the Horn Frogs are able to move the ball. But, you know, optimistics will say, well, now Tech is getting the ball. They're just going to have to figure out something. Um, it's not too late. Um, it's only 14 to zero. Uh, they still have a chance to bring it back, and they've still got the entire rest of the game. But we've got to. They've got to figure out something if they want to make this comeback. Exactly. Now here come the Horn Frogs, kicking off again. Maybe Tech wants to bring this one out. Maybe they have a chance to run. Looks it like looks, he will. Right, that's Mitri's Fleming, and, and he fumbles fumble. the ball, and it is recovered TCU by the recovers. Horn Frogs. It is just not a good start to today's game. Mm. No, it is not. I. I think they I think the Golden Eagles have come into this game with a confidence that is kind of punching them in the mouth cuz TCU remember they're an FBS team. These are the big dogs yeah. that we're facing right now. Well, the big horn the big horned frogs if you will. Right. Oh. A late throw batted away. If the defender had a little more speed, he could have intercepted that. Now it's second and 10. As we saw at the end of last week's game, Tech was just letting simple mistakes uh, let the Bulldogs get bigger gains and even come back to score a little bit at the end of that game. Oh, wow. They had him bottled up in the backfield, but he is still able to power through for five yards. Ball now on Tech's 18, third and five, minute and a half left in the first quarter. Tech really needing a stop. Horn Frogs are already in field goal range. 
You need a bend, don't break defense right here for the Golden Eagles. Had it. And Had it. Stop right around the line of scrimmage. Good, good. That is bring up fourth and five. Michael Scavo and Jaquan Coles on the tackle. Fourth and five. Horned Frogs having the kick. This is good. Now, this is the first stop they've been able to achieve. Um, the only downside it is in field goal range. Um, but this gives us some, some light so that later on in their next drives they're going to be able to make something happen. Right. At least it's 17 to 0 and not 21 to 0. Right. So here come the Horned Frogs, ready to kick off again. Now, what do you think? Should the Golden Eagles try to return this? They did just have a fumble on that last return. Or do you just want to keep it in the end zone? You just got to have general ball security, but it looks like they're going to bring it out. Demetrius Fleming. Oh, he holds on to it that last time, but it looks like he took a nasty hit there. Yeah. It's going to cost him five yards on the return. So, again, the crowd's still getting into this. Their Horn Frogs are playing well so far. But here comes Bailey Fisher running back on each side of them. Drops back to throw. Throws. Complete he's passes heading to the outside. Right. He's got Day Day Gist. Should be a They've first got a first down. down. That is Tex first. First down. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my dude. goodness. <laughs> I hope they're okay over there. These poor chain movers. It looks like they're right. They're picking it up over yeah. there. So good, good job, guys. Uh, I don't think they get paid enough. No, they do not. Especially for the danger they're put in every game. Bailey Fisher dropping back. He's gonna keep He's it. Gonna keep Ooh, it. Ooh, spin, spin move. move on a guy who did not have an angle on him, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Bailey Fisher is able to pick up six yards. Tech is now moving the ball. But, you know, not going to really be impressed until they can get onto the other side of the field on their own, not just by, you know, horn frog mistakes. And, Ooh, um, almost intercepted there. Pass intended for Justin Odin out of Columbia, Tennessee. It's going to bring up third and four. Come on, Golden Eagles. Wings up, Asher. They're going to get this first down. Bailey, what? Oh! Oh, Mitch is swimming right around outside. Fleming. He's loose. He, he is able to pick up that first down. Look at that. It's going to put him right around the 48, 49 yard line. Weird little man. And that is the end of the first quarter. TCU Horn Frogs, 17, Golden Eagles, 0. Asher, so far, what we've seen right at the end of that first quarter, Golden Eagles are able to move the ball, but. You don't want that to be a case when you're down 17. Yeah, you. It's it would have been uh, better if they were able to move these ball earlier in the first quarter. Um, but it's it's good they're making this uh, making these plays right here around the end. So hopefully in the rest of this half here they're going to be able to continue to move the ball and get some points on the board. It's um, kind of cut down this deficit a little bit. All right, and so now let's go to our correspondents on the field, Techman and Asher. What do you guys have to say? Thank you, guys. Here we are in Fort Worth, Texas. We're getting ready to watch the game. We were unable to find the gate we needed to go through yet, but it'll be fine. These purple toads ain't going to be nothing. We eat lunch for frogs, breakfast, and dinner. We're going to be fine. What? What? What are you? Turn on. Uh, I don't think they're in the right Texas. I... I don't think... Should we tell them? It'll be fine. I think they'll figure it out. Let's get back to the game. All right, we're starting the second quarter here. Uh, Tech has gained a little momentum at the end of the first. Right. Let's Hopefully they can carry that into the second quarter. Look at that. Total yards, 62 to 140. Horned Frogs have over double the yardage of the Golden Eagles. But here they come. Bailey Fisher dropping back. He throws. Uh, incomplete pass. 
intended for number 19. Whoop. Is there a number 19 on it? I don't believe so. That is an incomplete pass by Bailey Fisher. Now it is second and 10 on the 48. There's a handoff to Day Day Gist, who is tripped up, but he might have been able to fall forward for a first down. It's going to be third, third and inches. inches. Ball on the 42 yard line. All right, as you guys can hear, the crowd is uh, kind of making a difference in this game. Last week, it was a smaller stadium, but as you said earlier, these are the big dogs. Uh, so this stadium is much larger. There are much more people in this stadium. And as you said, it's completely packed. So the crowd is definitely making a difference when it comes down to these plays. Tech was able to get the first down. It's going to bring up first and 10 on the 41-yard line. Day Day Gist able to get two yards. Time of possession is stuck around the same. Um, last week, Sanford had almost double the possession time Tennessee Tech had. Um, this week, it stayed right about the same. Bailey Fisher under center. Quick audible after the line. Drops back. Ooh. Oh, almost intercepted. A diving attempt. He came out of nowhere. I, he yeah. looked like he was wide open. So now it is third and eight. Ball on TCU's 39. I guess they don't call them frogs for nothing. Yeah, they are leaping out here. Come on, Golden Eagles. Bailey Fish drops back. He's going to quarterback keeper. Keep. He ran him over and... and he looks like he might have the first down. He was able to cross the line, tackled behind. And they first got it. Ten. First down. Golden Eagles. He ran He ran that guy over. Yeah, he did. <laughs> so now ball on the 31. Bailey Fisher hands off to Day Day Guest, who is immediately tackled. They were able to sniff that one out. Yeah, that is going to be a loss of three. Second and 13, ball on the 34, 520 left in the first half. Billy Fisher, play action, he's going to throw. Ooh, threw into what looked like triple coverage there. Bradley Clark, the intended receiver. All right, we're back in another third and 13 situation. As for third down conversions, they're only three for five. They already had a strong drive. We need this to continue if they want to put any points on the board. Bailey Fisher is still running, uh, only able to pick up a yard. Fourth and 12. Golden Eagles look like they're going to punt the ball. This is not good news for the Eagles, Tech Man. No, it is not. They were really looking to try to put up some points on this drive. But now Blake Alberts is going to punt. Just snap. Here's the kick. And it's going to be fair caught. So now here come the Horned Frogs. Ball on their 20. Starting this drive with 445 left in the first half. Ooh, deflected pass. Looked like Slater Howard was able to get his hand on the ball and bat it away. So that brings up second and ten. Good start for the Golden Eagles. You need these. Yeah, anything you can to disrupt the play is going to be able to make a difference in the long run. I think TCU might go to a run here because they have been successful on the run. You're right, but he is not right down there. behind the line of scrimmage. Looks like maybe a loss of one. Oh, they're going to call it right back at the line. Good. Good stop, Golden Eagles. Third and ten. 
Jaquan Coles looking like he's in the zone. Maybe he can get a sack on this play. 420 left in the first half. High snap. And ooh! Ooh. Jaquan Coles almost got there and it is caught for a first down. So close. Golden Eagles could have had a stop there. Almost making it a three and out. He was able to get the ball off just in time. So now ball on the 39, four minutes left. It's gonna be a handoff, and this is what the Horn Frogs are probably gonna stick with most of the day. Running out the clock with these run games. You know, a yard here, five here, a first down there. Just anything they can do to keep the clock rolling while they're moving down the field. All right, looks like it's going to be another run. It's going to come they up. stopped him short of the first down marker. Looks like Josh Lee on the stop. Yeah. Third and inches. If they go to a run, they will probably have the first down. Both teams, 50% on third down conversions. Yeah, they are loading up the line. Everybody's gonna meet in the middle. A little motion. Golden Eagles get set, and he's and gonna have the first down, it, and, and he's he breaking through. Come on. And they tripped him up. Jared Howell is able to get there. Ooh. This run game is just destroying Tech right now. It is. They've gotta figure out some way to combat it. Jared Howe came from all the way over to the right side to the left of Tech's defense to barely dive and trip him up. Tech needs a big stop in the red zone if they're going to have any hope of coming back in this game before the first half ends. another run to the left and touchdown Horn Frogs don't listen to that man yeah that's very inappropriate so Golden Eagles unable to make a stop they almost had a three and out on the opening of this drive but were unable to hold on to that so now that brings the score to 23 to 0 pending the extra point with just under three minutes left in the first half. Now, this has not turned out to be a good start for the Tennessee Tech football team here. Now, Coach Alexander, I wonder if he might have some plays cooked up, ready to go. You know, at this point, they're probably still scripting plays, um, but. You're going to have to mix something up if you want something to happen here. Exactly. Here comes the kicker. Ready to start this new drive for the Golden Eagles. Fielded in the end zone by Quentin Cross. He's just going to take a knee. Bring it out to the 20. 2.56 left in the first half. The Golden Eagles looking for anything. I think I think if they're able to bring it down and at least get a field goal, they'll be happy that they can move the ball, but they're really looking for a touchdown. Bailey Fisher drops back, throws. Interception. Intercepted, and it's going to be returned for a touchdown. This is not good at all. <sighs> Bailey Fisher now having only one complete pass out of eight attempts. Demetrius Fleming was the intended receiver there. And now he's got a pick six on the day. I believe uh, cornerback number seven was the one who got the sack on Bailey Fisher earlier. I think so. This is not good for Tennessee Tech. They've got to figure out something if they want to come back in this game. That's right, they do. And the kick is good. We are edging ever closer to a repeat of the last meeting between these two teams, which was on September 11th of 2010, where the Horned Frogs won 62-7 to 
head coach that day said he did not want to score that last touchdown uh, for the Horned Frogs. He he wanted to keep it at 55 to 7, but the quarterback just ended up having a running lane. They scored again. Quentin Cross able to. Uh, There's a flag on the play. It's like clipping on the. Res Uh, oh. Well, so that penalty will put the ball at the eight-yard line for the Golden Eagles. Not another not good start here. Um, Baylor Fisher gonna play action, and, and he's gonna be sack. sacked. Oh my goodness! Second, Ooh, second, fourteen. Ball on the four. Tech has their own end zone breathing down their neck. I think if Bailey Fisher's going to line up in the gun, he's going to have to field this in the end zone. Looks like he'll go under center. He's going to drop, drop back. back. Scary stuff, scary stuff. He lets it go. Almost, it's Almost caught. It's caught. <laughs> Deflected off a defender's hand. Caught by Quentin Cross, and now the Golden Eagles have a first down. Ooh, so Quentin Cross able to catch that ball and bring it to where he ran it for the kick return. All right, so a little gleam of hope here after getting backed up into the almost into the end zone. Right. Like luck was shining down on the Golden Eagles for that play. He's going to throw it to Day Day Guest, who's tackled behind the line. All right, Tech's going to call a timeout here. Try to institute some some form of a game plan to make a difference in these last two minutes of the first half. Exactly. Play action. Bailey Fisher's going to walk for a second. And, uh, and another sack. Another sack. <laughs> uh, TCU taking a timeout. Looks like they want the ball back before this half is over. Looks like TCU wants to try to run up the score on the Golden Eagles. Very disrespectful. They want to prove the point that you cannot come into an FBS team's home and beat them. Bailey Quarterback Fisher. keeper. Oh, Ooh, able to break a tackle. And, and that brings up a first down. Good for the Golden Eagles. Bailey Fisher able to roll out. And get a first down, takes it to the 32. Bailey Fisher's got the moves today. He ran over a guy earlier, and now he I think he hopped over that one. Yeah, he's able to He's able to power through some of these tackles, and maybe that's what they need. They'll need his strength, but you don't want him to get injured. Bailey Fisher Going gonna deep. air it out for a deep ball, and he overthrew Metrius Fleming. I see there, uh, TC has four sacks on the day. Three sacks. Three sacks. And one interception. Second and ten, the clock has stopped. 134 left in the first half. Bailey Fisher drops back. He's going to throw. Complete pass to number 19. Day Day Guess is going to be stopped. That is fourth and four. And TCU will take another timeout because they the want guy this from ball Old back. Town Road? Yeah, that's the guy from Old Town Road. All right. Here comes Blake Alberts. Back out again for his fourth punt of today's game. This is just not looking good for Tennessee Tech. It's 31 to 0 with about a minute left in the half. And. They've got to figure something out. They do. Because if they're gonna, 
If TCU plans on scoring the same amount of points in the second half, then it's going to turn into exactly like their last meeting. Right. Quarterback under center. Snap the ball. Oh, uh, and he's going to be sacked. I was unable to catch the number of the player. Here comes the replay. It was number 46, Sam Oldham, the president's son, the Cookville kid. This is what we need. Even if we're not able to get points on this board, we've got to get something that's going to be able to change the momentum of this game. Exactly. And you never know. A safety helps. You know, just keep driving them back. Break through that O-line and get some more tackles behind the line of scrimmage. Play clock winding down. 36 left in the first half. It's going to be a toss. It's going to push off Josh arm. Lee. And he's going to sidestep, break he's another still tackle. Going. He's still sidestepping. Wow. This. Wow. This is the second week in a row that the opposing team's halfbacks have had a pretty strong game. Yes. Uh, unlike Sanford, however, with the strong game their halfback is having here at TCU, they're actually winning. Right. The Horn Frogs are able to move the ball and score, unlike the Bulldogs who were able to move the ball and not put up any points on the board. A toss to the left. He's got a running lane. Oh, he's going to be tripped up by 28. Well, at the start of this drive, it looked like TCU was going to take it easy and just run down the clock and just take it into the take it into halftime, but at least at this point, I think they're going for another score. Slater Howard able to make the stop. And Tech does not want them to get into field goal range. You don't want them to get another, an another toss. This one's going to be stopped for a gain of a yard. Injured player. Rice and Tolly. The cornerback out of Irwin, Tennessee, is injured. Oh, I hope he's okay. All right, the seconds are slowly winding down here. Timeout TCU. Looks like they might go for a field goal. No. They're going to try to punch this one in. All wide receivers out. Half back to his left. Quarterback drops back. Dropping way back. He's going to throw for the end zone, and it is going to be... Almost intercepted. Ooh, batted away. Almost intercepted by number 16, the safety, Christian Watson, out of Duluth, Georgia. So here we are. It is halftime. Man, score 31-0. to zero. What's going on with the Golden Eagles? Ah, uh, Tech Man, I honestly have no clue. Um, you know, they came out of last week really strong. Um, with that 52 to 20 victory over Samford, and I don't know if it's still they still got victory in their minds or what, but they're they haven't had a chance to shoot themselves in the foot. They've just not been playing good football. Yeah, but um, you know, it, it's just them being outplayed by TCU at this point. You yeah. know, they have an interception. Bailey Fisher threw one interception, um, but the the rest of it is just you know. These bigger schools, they're able to get people who hit harder, who are maybe a little faster. But, you know, I believe in these Golden Eagles. I think they can do it. TCU was able to put up 31 points this half. What, Tech had Tech had 25 and one quarter last week. I believe so. Yeah. So, I believe in the Golden Eagles. Let's see what they can put up this second half in Fort Worth, Texas. So the Golden Eagles will receive to start this half off. TCU's head coach stuttering backwards. Tennessee Tech will receive this kick. Hopefully they can use this to uh, make something happen. They definitely need something. It's, if something's going to happen, it has to start right now. Right, and both hands on the ball. You do not want another fumble. Here we go, starting off the second half. 
Going to be fielded by Demetrius Fleming, who's running it out. It's going to be tackled right at the 21, maybe. Yep. Yeah. And the Golden Eagles are going to start this first half looking for anything right now. I, I hope there were some inspiring, but, you know, stern words said in the locker room. Yeah. Tennessee Tech has the ability to make these comebacks and play amazing football. Right. Uh, it's just gotta gotta find the find the energy and find the inspiration to do so. Right. And you need to cook up some plays that give your receiver separation. Bryson Tolly is gonna be out for eight weeks with a torn shoulder muscle. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Another takeaway from this not so good game for Tennessee Tech. Play action. And Tavin Kilpatrick unable to catch it. That is the second time that he's been targeted. Both times he's just been hit on the shoulder pads, unable to catch it. Yep, Tennessee Tech is still 50% on third down conversions. Bailey Fisher going to run keeper. it out. Ooh. And looks like he might have made it. We Reached have to see where his knee was forward. down. Fourth and one. Fourth and Boo! One. He had that first down. I think Tech should go for it. Yeah, I think they should. I think they should it, just put all their wide receivers out. Hail Mary, Blake, Blake Alberts. Yeah, going out for his fifth punt. Yeah. With it being fourth and one, they're kind of close to their to the red zone, uh, their own end zone. But if they needed they needed something to happen there. Yeah. Because we're only getting glimpses, but. Um, Quentin Cross able to make that tackle at the 29, and that is where the Horned Frogs will start their drive. So here comes Tech. Oh, odd little set in the backfield for TCU. He just looks like he's just taking a walk back there. Yeah. A a handoff, hand but... He's still moving forward, able to get two yards on the play. I was going to say he was tackled for loss, but he kept inching forward there. Yeah, this this halfback is just a powerful mover. It's going to be another handoff. Ooh, play oh, play action. Quarterback keeper. And out to the tight end who's able to get a first down. TCU now has the ball on the 39. Man, Tech. Tech not looking like themselves from last week. But again, this is an out-of-conference game. It doesn't matter when you get into the grand scheme of the main season. But, you know... You do want to be the team that puts it under your belt that you beat an FBS team. Could this be the year? You know, 18, Seth Carlisle able to make that tackle. He stands at 6 feet and 225 pounds. Yeah, the defense has to make a stop here. To even give the offense any any kind of chance. Exactly. Be second and nine on the forty yard line. I mean another handoff, Jaquan Coles. He kinda hesitated there. He looked he, like he could have made a play. He could have, but it looked like he just turned to the right too soon and he got caught up on the offensive line. But it is third and four. TCU just over half on third down conversions. Now I'm going to go ahead and call it. They're going to run this ball. Uh, I think they are going to run it. Tight end, backing up, resetting. It's a handoff. And he's got it. What do you do if you're Tech and you know they're going to run a certain play and you just can't stop it? you just got to try some different schemes. Um... Whether you swap from man to zone, you've just got to figure out what you're doing. Because um, right at the end of the first half, they were running the same toss play. 
just flipping it around, and they were making significant gains in right. yardage. Um, oh, almost a stop there. Jaquan Coles is able to get to the backfield really quickly, but unable to make those plays yet. Michael Scavo in on the tackle. It brings up second and two with four and a half minutes left in the third. Ball on Tex, 38. Odd set for the Horned Frogs. It's going to be Another a toss, toss play. And brought He's down gonna... either right at the line or right behind the line. It's Clay Mazengill, the linebacker out of Cookville. One of our how many Cookville kids? You know, we got about 30 Cookville kids on our team. But I'll let you count. TCU four for six on third down conversions. Third and two, ball on the 38. What? I guess it's going to be another run. Handoff right up the middle. He dives forward. That may have given him the extra push he needed there, and it did. Brings up first and ten. Ball now on the 35. Now moving on eight plays for 36 yards, but they've been able to shave almost three minutes off the clock. Another toss. Going way out wide. Wow. Causing him to lose yardage there. Number 26, Jamal Thompson in on the stop. That'll be a loss of six. Pushes them way back to the 41. It looked like he was holding on to that ball, looking to throw it, but yeah. I guess he just didn't see what he wanted to, and that ended up costing them six yards. That so definitely pushes the momentum in Tech's favor. Quarterback drops back. That ball is batted away, and that brings up third and 16. With it being over 10 yards on this third down, they're most likely not going to run it. Um, and that brings up, you know, Tech, is, Tech has pretty good zone defense. There we go. There it goes. They got the stop. Number 26, Jamal Thompson, making another stop. And that brings up fourth and 16. Now, the Tennessee Tech offense has to make something happen on this next drive. Right. Maybe we can start off with a punt return touchdown. That's going to be fair caught. Why? Oh, no. Looks, Looks like right around the under, inside the five. Ooh. Right on the five. Bad, bad field position. Tech really wanted it to roll into the end zone. But ball is doing everything it wants for TCU. Snap to Bailey Fisher. Play action. He's going to throw. And it's caught. Complete for Bradley Clark. Another first down there. Brings him up to the 24-yard line. Good start for Tech. That's exactly what we needed to get out of the being backed up against our own end zone there. That's good. Good little pass. Able to get a first down. He's oddballing out the line. I think TCU is expecting run here. It's a toss. Very successful. Oh, oh it's a throw. It's a throw to complete to Bailey Fisher. Wow. Another first down. That's definitely what they needed to do. Pull something out of the bag of tricks to make something happen on this drive if they want a chance of coming back. Right. Day Day Giss with an arm on him. Throws it to Bailey Fisher for another first down. Ball now on the 43. Uh, you know, these teams uh, are pretty even in every aspect except for yards gained. Day Day Gist able to push forward for first He's down still and still going. going. Bailey Fisher that brings up another first down. Wow, six complete passes. And look at that. TCU has only attempted eight passes on the day. TCU has only completed two passes on the day. 
just shows you how well they're able to run the ball. Bailey Fisher under center. Day Day gets behind him. Bailey Fisher is in the zone as he gets sacked. <sighs> Four sacks today for the Horned Frogs. Well, we can't let this crush the momentum. They were still moving pretty, pretty smoothly. Let's see if they can get back out there and continue that offense. Right. It's like a full house set. Mitrius Fleming out. Bailey Fisher calling out to him. It's a handoff to Day Day Gist, who's He's got a loose. running lane. Able to pick up a good chunk of change. That brings up third and six. That's a manageable third down. Right. We definitely need this conversion if we want this to happen. Clock is winding down. A minute 15 left in the third quarter. Tech really needs to, you know, you need to, you need to start moving a little quicker, but it's not too soon to where you need to start panicking if you want to win this game. Bailey Fisher Bailey Fisher on the keeper, and he's sacked for a loss. The left end now has two sacks on the day out of his three tackles. That brings up fourth and 11. And it looks like Tech is going to have to come out and punt this ball again. This just hasn't been good for Tennessee Tech today. They showed a little bit of hope there, but it didn't turn out. This is his sixth punt today, Blake Alberts. The hometown crowd here going crazy after that sack. Fair catch. Oh, Tech. That's Mike. exactly what we needed right there. Yes. They were able to down it on the three yard line. Tech, please get a safety here. Jaquan Coles, you've been able to get into the backfield all day. But I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, yep, it's that a right handoff, there. but they're able brought to get down him. behind the line. Right, that's going to be a loss of maybe a yard and a half a yard, but they're going to say second and ten. Good tech, this is what you need. Keep making those stops right here. Jaquan Coles is in the zone. He's ready to punch through that O-line and get to the quarterback. Here he comes. Oh my gosh. Jaquan Coles missed the tackle in the end zone. That brings up third and five, and that is the end of the third quarter. We need to get this stop. We have to stop them here. We're in the fourth quarter now. We have, we're going to have to score all of our points right here in this fourth quarter. We have nothing to even go on other than some a, a little bit of good offensive play. Um, and... The defense is making good plays, but they're just letting tackles slip right through their hands. Right. Well, let's see what the Golden Eagles can cook up. It is third and five on the eight. We're flipping the field. Everybody's getting a breather. Tech needs to come in and get a sack, a stop, a safety, anything to stop the Horned Frogs from moving the ball. Five for eight. On third down conversions, Tech needing a stop. Come on, boys. Yeah, let's get those wings up. Get those wings up. Here he comes. And oh, my gosh. They just let him go. He breaks another tackle. Michael Scavo finally able to trip him up. Wow. What was so promising for Tech now turns into disaster as the Horn Frogs are able to keep their drive going and they're just going to use up more of the clock. Yeah. At this point, the only thing TCU has to do is just drain this clock. They, there's no need to score any more points. Um, yeah, this is not looking good for the Golden Eagles at all. Another, another handoff. handoff, but this one's going to be met behind the line by Josh Lee. That brings up second and 12 on the 27. Right. 
Lining up in the I formation. Another handoff. So what and they're another do. tackle for loss, it looks like. Yeah, looks like Jaquan Coles was in on the stop. Brings up third and 12. Six minutes left. Here come the Horn Frogs. Golden Eagles looking for this stop. They need it. Jaquan Coles is in the zone. And here he comes. Oh, he they might through. get to him. Interception. Interception by number 46, Sam Oldham, who brings it back to the 12, who brings it back to the 14-yard line. First and 10, Golden Eagles. Look at Coach Alexander. Coach Alexander is throwing some more offensive players out there. We've got to make this happen right now. Here's an instant replay on that. It looks like the intended receiver was 87 there. But this is what Tech needs. Right. We have to score on this drive. We can't settle for a field goal. You just want to base it on this. Get a southern miss next week. Yeah. Right. Bailey right. Fisher on the play action. He's rolling out. He's going to throw it across his body, and that is caught by Tevin Kilpatrick. Did he get it? Why is the one catch that you make this entire game out of bounds? Oh my gosh. It has not been a good game for Mr. Tavin Kilpatrick. <laughs> <laughs> Bailey Fisher under center. He's in the zone. Drops back to pass. He throws. Incomplete. Too low. To Bradley Clark. Brings up third and ten. The hometown crowd here raising their voices to hopefully make a difference, but Bailey Fisher's got this. He's just got to focus. He drops back. He rolls out. He throws. It's caught. Tevin Kilpatrick with the touchdown. Golden Eagles score with five and a half minutes left in the second half. I think you got to go for two. Yeah, you, you almost have to if you want to cut down this deficit. Look at that. He was wide open. Now he's making up for his two incomplete passes and <laughs> and a catch out of catch the out of bounds. <laughs> that looks like Willie Miller, who's going to hold the ball for Luke Maynard on the extra point attempt. Looks like they will not be going for two, trying to play it safe because um, they still have to be able to get the ball back. Right. So let's see if they're going to attempt the onside kick here. I would not be surprised if they did try an onside kick. Uh, it looks like TCU is lining up as if they are ready to receive an onside kick. Looks like Tech is lining up for an onside kick here. Ooh. Well, it looked like it at first. Blake Alberts, if it is an onside kick, wings up. It is an it onside is. kick, but it's recovered by TCU. At the 50-yard line, a linebacker. All right, Tech's got to get another stop here. I think they can do it. I think, I think that touchdown and that stop that they had is giving them the momentum they need to keep driving against TCU. Another handoff. Brought down by Jaquan Coles. Here we go. It's only a yard gain. Now, we're going to have to keep an eye on the clock because that's going to be the factor that's really going to hurt us here. Right. Um, we know that we, if we get the momentum and we have the energy, we can make this comeback, but we have to keep an eye on that clock. I think that's what TCU is looking at. As I think they want to run out the clock as much as they can. Play clock down to 10. Running back is showing blitz. And he is, spins out of the way, and, and he's got a first down. down. This halfback is just demolishing Tech's defense. 132 yards after contact. Wow. That is insane. So we've crossed the five-minute mark in the fourth quarter. Jaquan Coles is in the zone. 
Maybe he's ready to punch through. Halfback rolling out. They might be running a trick play to pass to him. It's a fake. He rolls out, but and he's going to be sacked. Sacked. Number 30, Clay Mazingill. Man. Number 30, Clay Mazingill on the sack. That brings up second and 11. Another play to up this momentum for the Tech defense. Right. Another hand, hand off. To the fullback, and he's only good for two yards. One yard. Brings up third and 10. Tech needing the stop. We need a stop or we need an interception. Right. Um, if we get to, if we make the stop and they punt, uh, it's going to push us back, and we're going to have pretty much the entire field to go on. Right. Six and ten on third down conversions. Quarterback drops back to throw, and and it is caught by the tight end, who TCU. dives forward. It's caught by the tight end who dives forward to the seventeen or sixteen yard line, and. Horned Frogs have another first down. So with 3.50 left in the game, it's looking dire for Tennessee Tech. Tech's got to make something happen. We've got to get sacks. We've got to get intercepted. We've got to just get a turnover here. It's going to be a handoff to the halfback who's just able to run through everybody. It's going to be a gain of two. Jaquan Coles came from the left side of the defensive line there all the way over yeah. to make that stop. It's going to be a gain of three. Second and seven. Horn Frogs up 31 to seven with 320 left in the game. A couple of hard counts here. Yeah. Letting the play clock wind down. Direct, Direct snap, snap to the halfback. Wow, it was tripped up by Clay Mazingill. Hard hit to the legs on that halfback. Right under three minutes here. Third and five. TCU seven and 11 on third down conversions. Tech needing a stop. Letting the play clock wind down. Snap, hand off to the fullback, who is tackled, unable to get the first down. All right, this brings up fourth down, and they're most likely going to go for a field goal here. Right. Unless they're just looking at continue to run down this clock. But they will go for the field goal attempt. That's going to give Tech uh, right over two minutes to... Piece anything together. Yeah. At this point, they probably just need to look at putting, just piecing together a drive. Right. Um... Because I hate to say it, but I think this is the one's already in the books. I think so, but, you know, good job by the Golden Eagles. The score is 34-7, to better than 62-7. to Yeah, definitely. They've made a, a better defensive play than they did last time. Ready to kick this one off to the Golden Eagles. And that looks like it's going to go out of bounds. But they're just going to say it hit the end zone. All right, I'd, I disagree with take that. Take another look at that. That should be a penalty. And Tech should have more yards, but they're going to start on the 20, first and 10. I formation. I, I don't think you need to run this. Yep, Bailey Fisher's going to drop back. He's going to throw. Ooh. Oh, Quentin Cross, the intended receiver, couldn't get his hands on it. Second and ten. Bailey Fisher audibling at the line. Going to... Oh, 
handoff to Day Day Guest, who was met right as he got the ball. Surprised they didn't fumble there. Ooh, wow. That is a hard hit. Not a good look on this last drive here. This brings up third and 13. Let's see what Tech can do. If it was me, I'd prefer not to have to give TCU the ball again to finish out this game. Right. I would rather end the game on my own terms. Bailey Fisher but just throws the ball away. They're going to say... Kind of a late hit there. Yeah, they're going to say the ball was intended for Quentin Cross. Bailey Fisher just throwing it away to avoid another sack on the day. Here comes Blake Alberts. And a seventh punt on the day. A little adjustment. Could they be trying to trick play here? Nope. It's just a weird little punt. It's going to be caught and fielded. Brought down by Quentin Cross at the 44. So now a minute 38 left in this game. TCU up 34-7. to And Golden Eagles have done their best to try and contain an FBS team. They've done all right, but still it's a score that you would expect yeah. from a game like they're, this. They're a much bigger school. Um, obviously the stadium's a lot bigger, so they're the, they're the ones that can pick and choose who they want to come play for them. Right. Um, Jake Juan Coles in the zone. Maybe he wants to pad some stats. Maybe he just wants to hit somebody. I know I would. Yeah, I definitely feel the frustration after coming off of a big win from last week and after suffering a big loss this week. Right. Um, Comes Jaquan like Coles chasing blood. him around. Good. Good for you, Jaquan Coles. Third and 11. We've crossed the minute mark. And now it is third down. Player of the game, Sam Oldham, with two tackles, a sack, and an interception. I, th I think he earned that reward. Play clock winding down. 40 seconds left in the game. I think you just run this and pump the ball to Tech. So they are going to do, but he breaks a tackle. He is showing the moves off here. Yeah. And Tech called a timeout. Tech calls a timeout. They are ready to score 27 points in 29 seconds. They're, I, honestly, I believe they could do it. If they score, that gives them one second <laughs> per touchdown. <laughs> um, you know, it's – this is Coach Alexander's, what, third year now? Yeah. He's had time to turn this team around. That's something he could probably pull out. Exactly. Fair call. It's going to roll into the end zone. So Tech is going to start on the 20. I think what you do, you just Hail Mary it. You catch it in the end zone. You go for an onside kick. You let it go 10 yards. You run that into the end zone. You go for another onside kick. You let that one go 10 yards. Pick it up. Run it for another touchdown. And there you go. You win the game. Exactly what he just said. Now that's much easier done than said. Am I right? So they're about to, that's to right. pull it out of the hat here. Time to break some names with sticks and, and stones as Bailey Fisher said. <laughs> Tech calls another timeout. Every player on TCU's defense and offense has been able to record a sack on Bailey Fisher today. As just, How many sacks is that now? Five or six? I think that's six. This offensive line is just not capable of holding him back. No. But we've got 17 seconds left to go, and we're going to see if we can piece together something to, to end out this game on a Bailey on Fisher in the zone after just getting sacked. He drops back. He's ready to air it out for five yards. Caught by Tavin Kilpatrick, the man who refused to catch a ball this entire game. Who is, who is now injured. injured. <laughs> this has not been a good game for Tech. That's the second injured player. It looked like it was a shoulder. And, and that just shows a little bit of selfishness on Tech's side. The game is over. Why are you throwing the ball? And now you've just injured yeah. your key tight end. 
Uh, this just goes back to last week. They were up 52, and we're still trying to throw Hail Mary passes. Right. But it looks like this is going to be the end of the game. Golden Eagles come into Fort Worth. And that Man. Golden Eagles come into Fort Worth. You know, they put up a good fight, but this is an FBS team. Tech is only in the championship subdivision. I think Bailey Fisher's in his fields there. Yeah. I would not be too hard on yourself. Um, yeah, this is not a team you face on a regular basis, so it's it's not it's not something you have to worry about. Right. So Tech is going to go one and one on the season, but we still haven't reached conference play yet, which I think you know our season will start to go up because you know with Sanford you're able to put up 52 points. That's that's a good key for what you're going to be able to do against your own conference. TCU, that was a hard-fought game. They are an FBS team, much bigger. You know, they've got more money. They've got a better stadium. They've, they're able to, you know, put more assets into their football team. So yeah. I think it's good that you can come in, put up a good fight against this team, and, you know, just go get ready to face the other Golden Eagles, which is what we will do next week yeah, as we week. go to Southern Miss – to Our take on the Golden third Eagles. Third away game in a row. <laughs> Our third away game in a row. Golden Eagles, you know, are really putting themselves through a ringer, but I think if you toughen up, when you come home, you are ready to yeah, lay yeah. down a good game at home. And so... I'll be excited to get back to Tucker Stadium. Uh, I will. Uh, I miss overall field. I'm ready that, to breathe that Cookville air. That Golden Eagle marching band. Oh, yeah. It's on another level. Who we will see perform a halftime show. After next week, we will be back in Tucker Stadium against North Carolina Central. But for now, we sign off. We go to face Southern Miss next week. Good game here against the Horn Frogs. We put up a good fight against a bowl team. You know, yeah. that that's, that's all you can ask for. And they were able to draw up some points there towards the end, so it's... It, it wasn't all for nothing, I guess. Right. Well, from Fort Worth, Texas, I am Tech Man. And I'm Asher Nicholson. Telling you all good night, have a good week, and wings up. Wings up. Bye, everybody. You know, I wonder if our correspondents ever found out where they were at. I still don't know where we are.